Hi, welcome to Icy Kicks. On today's show, well, we're gonna do something that's a bit of a challenge these days, and that is we're gonna review every single car in the RC Kicks collection. Mm. Now, it <laughs> just thinking about it scares me. If I spend one minute on every single car, this video is gonna be well over an hour. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of time to film, edit, and put out, and for you guys and girls to invest an hour watching me go over every single car. So, to thinking of a way of making it slightly easier, I'll try and clump the manufacturers together, and also in the description of this video, I'll put a timestamp to every single car. So if you want to see certain cars, then uh, you can just go and watch those. That makes sense. Also, this is really good for me because it means I can dust down all the cars at the same time. As I've been building the studio, some of the cars are getting a bit dusty and obviously some of them are sitting on the shelves and I don't know what it is but RC cars get dusty very fast so I'm doing a bit of housekeeping at the same time right let's crack on with number one. Oh god car number one is a very recent purchase for the channel and it is the vortex from armor this is a 3s basher truck very modern, not like you have to build it yourself, ready to run as it comes. I've done a few videos on this. Um, I can't put a link to every single video to every single car because you're only allowed to put so many links per video. But if you go and look in the archives, you will find videos on pretty much all these cars. So that is the Vortex. Only just came out recently. Uh, I put some bling on the bottom of it, looked pretty cool. Um, I am thinking about chopping it in though. I've got to do some more filming with it, but I'm really tempted to get an X-Max. So maybe this and a few other cars will go to fund an X-Max. Comment below if you'd like to see an X-Max on the show. So that is the Vortex. And this is a Traxxas TRX4, and it was the first Traxxas I ever had in the collection. What can I say about it? Well, it needs no introduction. It's probably the most famous 4x4 crawler and has sold millions of units, no problems at all. People love them. If you want to get a crawler and you've got a bit of budget, this is definitely a place to look first. You can get so many modifications for this truck, it will blow your mind. You can spend a fortune on these trucks, modifying and upgrading them, and there's so many different options. They've just brought out the Bronco, uh, which is a new body of the, the new design Bronco as well. And there's lots of beautiful ones. I didn't really have the budget, so I went with the Sport, but the Sport is highly capable, especially if you want to do crawling uh, over rocks and things like that, because it's got locked diffs. Whereas the more expensive ones, you can turn on, you can open and close the diffs, as well as you get a high and low range gearbox, whereas this one doesn't. But I don't care. I love the basic entry level one. Now this has had quite a bit of upgrades sprinkled on it by Treel. It's got metal front and rear axles as well as many other little options as well i've got two bodies for it i had the original one because i used it as a bit of a camera car as well but i used to take it out and just enjoy it and that's exactly what this is about and i still do that now next on the show is the hoss now this is pretty new it's only just arrived and an unbox and i think i'm gonna sell it to be honest with you love the orange great fun to drive it's a lot harder to drive than the vortex we are going to do a comparison crash clash video later on so it's not going to go straight away but it probably will go on to help fund my x max so we'll see but that is the hoss Next is my 1.8 Hyper VS from Hobeo. Now I've had this one for a while and I've done a few light modifications to it. It's got a Hobbywing Max 10, runs 4S, goes like the absolute clappers. I put some Badland tires on it and it's in really good condition. I've driven it a few times, but um, it's a bit dangerous to drive around the children as it's so heavy and so fast. I mean, it's crazy fast, but I really like it. Don't know if I'm going to keep it. Maybe I will sell it and put that money towards an X-Max like the other two cars. Because if I sell all three, I think I've probably got enough to get an X-Max. So it may go, it may stay. But I really like it and bang for buck, great value. And the quality is brilliant. Now we move on to my WL Toys 018 and 019. Now I am a big fan of these budget racers. And if you are 
limited on your resources but you want to have fun i can highly recommend these things these have a great following and people are doing some crazy things with these now now i'm going to keep one and i'm going to sell one i'm going to keep this one and i'll probably sell this one the only reason is i just don't need to have two i've got other small buggies as well but i enjoy just taking this out and blasting it around the garden uh, for 15 minutes and then just putting it away again and not worrying or stressing about it but i don't really need two so i'll probably let this one go and just keep this one next on the list is my lc racing emb1 big fan and the fastest car around the bugrad track currently so uh, of course it's going to stay it's not going anywhere but that this is another reason why one of the wl toys has got to go i don't need to have that many small little runners between this and the other wl toys that's plenty and I can also share and I can drive this and someone else can drive the WL toys but uh, yes lovely quality and I am a big fan hopefully I'll get some more LC racing cars on the channel but they are quite expensive but I will promise to bring a few more now something a little bit different a tiny 124th I think it is yeah 124th tiny little exceed cross country something or other now i picked this up purely because someone smarter than me made this and turned it into a hot shot so i got all the parts 3d printed and i've got them all here to convert this into a hot shot yeah and i've also had this for two years so at some point I must do this on the show and I think it'll be a really good one that a lot of you would see. Now I don't even know if you can still buy this, I haven't even checked, but in its own right it's a great little, uh, little sort of cross country thing. It's quick, it's nippy, it's got reasonable suspension and it was, I can't even remember how much it was, it was pretty dirt cheap to be fair. And that's why I have this little fella. Whoops. <laughs> Now next is one that's never been on the channel and it's never even been out of its box. This arrived two weeks ago and I haven't yet done an unboxing, running or anything. Now this is the Speed X03A brushless, apparently supposed to do about 60 kilometers an hour, which is what, 45 mile an hour, give or take. So the reason I got this in is I've been running a lot of one tenth quite expensive bashers and this came up as an opportunity to see if you don't have that kind of budget can something like this fill that void or is it just junk and you should just move on past so stay tuned this will be one that will be coming shortly and last but not least is this this is my last banggood special car and this is the zd racing oh what's the name it's a rocket dbx10 now i love the look of this buggy it's brilliant it's absolutely stunning and this is the entry level one so great value for money it has the plastic chassis which i prefer because if you get the metal chassis it's more likely to bend it where the plastic seems to be pretty good and we bashed the life out of this one now it has failed the electronics have gone i think it's the esc or the motor is packed up i haven't even bothered looking at it it still steers but it won't go forward or backwards but don't let that put you off a great buggy and if you go for the entry level one you can obviously put brushless in it and upgrade it with some bit more mainstream electronics and you'll then have the best of both worlds where you've got a great looking scale kind of rig and also you've got better electronics and it will be quicker so that's what i plan to do on this one so stay tuned there will be an upgrade video on this one and also i'll take it out when i put brushless in it to see if it can hold up to that power which it should being that you can get brushless ones already next is my lovely little camtech short wheelbase banger now i built this on the channel and it was done in collaboration with camtech and i love it i haven't driven it yet as you can see it's in uh, st still in immaculate condition and it is gorgeous but i have picked up this a full metal body which is supposed to be a ford uh, mondeo i think it is uh, with the bonnet and everything like that so I need to pick up another one at some point I'll get the exact same kit and then I will build on the show a metal banger paint it up I have all the parts that go internally to make a metal one so I will at some point pick up another short wheel, uh, wheelbase one I think these are about 90 100 pound and then I'll do another one on the show so that will be coming soon but that is my Camtech short wheelbase <laughs> that's cool and another one from Camtech is this, the Hot Rod. Now, I absolutely adore this thing. It looks brilliant. And you get to put your own decals and stuff like that. It doesn't come with a set of decals. So I kind of made up my own. 
Uh, the only thing that's different from this is I fitted a Schumacher diff, so it actually has a rear diff in this one. I haven't even driven it yet. I'm still waiting to get out and uh, find somewhere very flat and smooth to run this. This should absolutely fly. So that is my hot rod from Camtech. There is a build video for this one and a body as well, so you can find that in the RC Kicks archive. And now we move on to Mardave and we'll kick off with probably one of the most famous little Mardaves that's only just come out. This is the Mini 50th, 50th anniversary, only 50 units were sold to customers. This is actually a, a publicity one, so this is Chassis 00. zero. There was a few extras for development and then obviously this one for publicity where I did a video for them on the show. Absolutely gorgeous and if you look it has the carbon bumper option as well and it is full carbon underneath. Stunning little thing again waiting to drive it on a very flat dry surface so that will be coming to the show I promise I will drive it at least once but uh, yes yeah, very sought after and very valuable now so that is the mini 50th. Another one from Mardave is this beautifully engineered FP1 Formula One car. Now it's been on the show when I built it and also did a little bit of test running with it. But yeah, I still need to get around to painting and cutting out the body. I have everything I need. It just needs to come back on the channel to finish it off. I am looking at putting a better quality transmitter receiver with this, which I now have. So hopefully I'll be able to take it out again soon as it is a real weapon. Not the easiest car to drive in the world by a long shot. You've really got to get your temperatures in the tires. Um, but uh, absolutely gorgeous bit of engineering. So that is the FP1 from Mardave. And a very special buggy that I am lucky enough to have in the collection and will stay in the collection is this, the Mardave Cobra Evo. This was released last year. What's so special, I hear you cry? This is a 001 chassis, which basically means it's the first one out of the factory. And I was lucky enough to get it on the show to show everybody super early. It's so early, it's still using some 3D printed parts that were replaced with carbon for everybody. Now it has had a little bit of an upgrade. It has a carbon motor mount on it, which it didn't come with originally, but Mardave are about to release new front arms and new uprights, which I will fit to this when they're available. I've spoke to Chris at Mardave and hopefully I'll be able to get a set once they're finally released so I can do an upgrade on the show for you. Absolutely adore it, lovely for what it is. And uh, it also set a pretty decent time around the Bugrad track. So that is my Cobra Evo. Next we move on to a very famous buggy that doesn't really need much introduction and that is the Schumacher Racing XLS Cat. Now I have a very love-hate relationship with this and there's lots of videos on this and I'm waiting to do a full strip down and rebuild with every option possible. I'll also do a video on all the options that I've got waiting for this. The problem is I love this car, but I hate working on it. So that will be coming later on in the summer where I'm going to strip it down and rebuild it completely. <sighs> These are now becoming insanely expensive and very rare. Unfortunately, I don't have a new inbox one. I just have this one, but it will never leave the uh, collection. That's for sure. So that's my Schumacher. XLS. And next is one of my favorite vintage buggies from Schumacher Racing that was re-released, the Top Cat. Uh, I did it in this blue, which is my favorite color, and I'm a big fan of this buggy, to be fair. I've done some modifications to it to try and improve it. It's now got the narrow front end arms, the brass center, and the metal pivots that you can buy from Schumacher. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued, so getting a new inbox one now has become super tricky, as well as if you want to put the pro transmission in it, they are hard to find. I went a different route with this one, and I went with Mazu models, and I put in a slipper clutch and a ball diff. So now I can run brushless just the same as if I had the pro transmission, but I thought it was a bit more interesting to go a slightly different route. It also has a few other upgrades, upgrade bits and pieces as well in it, and it will definitely be staying in the collection and needs to run a new time around the Bugrad track as well. Next from Schumacher Racing is the Mission FT front wheel drive car. Now I built this on the channel, there's a video on it, but there's no driving footage of it, but I've driven this quite a lot. And for some reason, the footage has never made it onto its own video. So I will do that at some point, but it's now going to get an upgrade 
Um, it's getting a new transmitter receiver fitted to this, which is a bit more in keeping with this kind of racing. This is more of a proper racing car. So I will do that. And then I will do some proper running footage. I could do with doing a few upgrades to it as well, but it's got, um, I don't know whether I'll end up selling it or whether it's worth throwing a load of hop up options on it. You can get a full carbon chassis for this. Also, I've seen you can convert this to four wheel drive which I did think about doing on the channel, but then I thought, well, it's nice to have a front wheel drive car, so I think I'll leave it as it is, but there is quite a few nice little bling bits and pieces for it. I don't know, comment below if you'd like to see some upgrade parts thrown into this car. And my last Schumacher car is this, released last year. It is the only F1 car released by Schumacher Racing, and it is the Icon. I haven't finished it, I know, I know. I need to paint it up, it's all cut out. It all fully works and it's fully operational. It just needs the body painting. Super difficult to drive, very hardcore, proper racing. If you think about getting one of these, make sure you re you understand how difficult they are to drive and they are hard work. They are designed to be a race car, not really a toy. So if you're an F1 fan, there is probably other kits that are probably more suited, especially if you just want to take it out for a bit of a drive where this is a proper racing car first. So there you go. Now we're looking at two of my, oh, my favorite RC cars in the collection, and I adore them. Just look at it. That's my uh, A-Stamp Cadillac. Yes, it's not super early. Put a new body on it, low, probably about four or five months ago. Stunning, absolutely gorgeous, and I love it. And then this one here is the re-release, never been driven. I must finish the body on this one as well. I painted up this body and I'm just leaving it for a while before I address painting this body up. Now, they are gorgeous. I, every now and again, I wobble a little bit and think, can I justify having two of them in the collection? Maybe I should sell it because I have the boxes for all these as well. Uh, there's a lot of these are now worth quite a lot of money. So maybe I should just let one go and then reuse that money because I really, really want a Welds car, a uh, RC10 Welds car. And the prices on those have gone up. So I could probably sell one of these and buy one of those and then have a different car instead of having a re-release and an original one. But I don't know. Anyway, I'm waffling on. So let's move on. But oh, just look at it. Absolutely perfection. Next is this little gem. I was lucky enough to pick this up just before prices went insane. And that is an RC10 graphite chassis car, super rare. And this one is in lovely condition with almost no damage at all. Super light running. So trying to get a hold of one of these now, oh, the prices have gone crazy. So I couldn't afford to add them to the collection if I was looking now. Now, I haven't done anything to this. I haven't even stripped it down and cleaned it yet. I do have a replacement body for it, which I will paint up in the same sort of design because I kind of like it. Uh, getting hold of the stickers may be a bit of a challenge, but I just love the look of it. But yes, at some point it will get a full rebuild, but it is never leaving the collection, that's for sure. Oh, I just need to get that world car. And this is a very special car that I have in my collection. And it's the only car I have from this manufacturer. It's 10th Technologies Predator X10. Now I have to give a massive thank you to Lee at LNL Models who managed to track one of these down at a reasonable price. This is also in lovely condition, barely being driven at all. Yes, I have a whole new body for it, body set, because I'm not too keen on the blue, but uh, to get one of these in a collection, and I got hold of this when the prices had already gone insane. Now these are easily pushing a thousand pound a go, and I just don't have that kind of budget for one little buggy, but I absolutely adored it. I had one on the show that was lent to me for the day, and I fell in love with it, so I had to have one, but because prices were so stupidly expensive, it was getting really difficult to find one, and I wanted a good one as well on top of that, and luckily, that's exactly what I've got. So that is the Predator X10. I uh, would like an X11, but not at the prices that they are currently selling for. Uh, yeah, they are very expensive. 
And now we move on to Kyosho, and I thought I would pick a very special car indeed to start with. That is this, the Tom's Turbo Optima Mid Special, which is the rarest uh, mid that you can get. Now, parts have become insanely difficult to get for the mids now, being that there's been no re -re's yet. Come on, Kyosho, get a move on. We want to see some mids, please. So parts are hard to find and prices have rocketed. So this one is definitely gonna stay in the collection. I, the, I even struggled to get this a few years ago and I bought this one as a half car. It was missing quite a few parts and I've been slowly putting it back together again. And now I've pretty much got something very special indeed. Next is this gorgeous little thing, the Phantom EP four-wheel drive pan car by Kyosho. And I got this on the show because it was different and I thought I'd make some content with it. Turns out I absolutely love it, love driving it. It absolutely is great fun to drive, it handles well. You just need a very flat surface uh, to, to drive it properly. But I found some reasonable roads that are kind of good enough for what I do but it's stunning, it's vintage looks, the quality of the kit and how it drives, it's definitely staying. I've managed to source extra tires, another body and a few other upgrade parts. So eventually I can retire this after I've driven it well and then I can restore it back to minty fresh and then put it on the shelf. But this is a driver car, it's got a few, few war wounds already, but I adore it and I highly recommend getting one if you can the kits are still available but as for the optional upgrades yeah good luck with that um, i've managed to find a carbon chassis upgrade for it from uh, h2rd brilliant good value highly recommend them if you have one already you can get the whole lot and upgrade it but there's lots of upgrades from kurosho but they're so difficult to get now you've got a rear axle in carbon a lightweight um, adapter at the back here bearings at the front and things like that and I've shaved it down to 606 grams extra wing they're just really difficult to get all these parts but I've upgraded this one and I'm super happy with it the only thing I like to do different is I put a brushless Le Mans motor in it and it's not fast enough I had a uh, Formula One Kyosho brush motor in it that was faster so I may change that back because it was really lively back then, but it handled the power with its unique four wheel drive system and chain, which I really like. Anyway, that is the Phantom EP. Now we move on to the Riri Turbo Optima. I did a full uh, build of this on the show and I can highly recommend you go check it out. It is one of my favorite re-release kits and probably the best Riri kit that's been made to date. It is absolutely stunning. It's like a precision clock. Now, most of my cars are fully working. They've, they've got electronic speed controllers, motors, servos, everything, and I can pick them up and just drive them, even though sometimes I don't drive them. But this will never be driven, and that's why it doesn't have any electronics in it at all. Have I got a motor in it? Yes, it's got a nice vintage gold Akurusha motor in it. But apart from that, that is it. This one will never be driven. Why? Because of the bottom. Look at that. If you drive that, you will scratch it instantly. So this is one of those cars that I don't even poodle around in the garden with now and again. I've got the chain in it as well, and it's mint. The only thing I've upgraded on this one is the sidebars are not original. Nerf bars, whatever you want to call them. Also, the top deck has been changed to a carbon top deck as well, mainly because I just thought that the standard one that come with it just let the kit down a little bit. It's so beautiful that a nice bit of carbon at the top, and it wasn't expensive, it just lifted it. Absolutely beautiful, and one of the crowning gems in my collection. Next, we move on to the Tomahawk from Kyosho, the re-released version. Another beautiful car from Kyosho that was re-released. The quality is phenomenal. I can highly recommend these kits, even though they are not cheap by any means. Lovely to drive, great fun. What have I got in this? A bl uh, brushless Le Mans 240S motor. The motor is probably worth half the value of the car. Those motors from Kyosho are insane. Never collect Kyosho motors. It's an expensive hobby, don't do it. Plus there's not many of them around, especially the vintage ones. So leave them for me. <laughs> so this is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Proper retro looking buggy. Um, you can still get them just, but uh, yeah, limited stock availability. But uh, yeah, 
Definitely a collector's piece, but fun to drive as well. And this is a re-release Javelin that I built on the channel not that long ago. <laughs> I think it's so heavy, it's built like a tank. Now I wasn't actually keen on these originally, so I didn't bother getting one in. And then later on I kind of changed my mind, so I ended up getting one and I built it on the show and it will stay on the channel. This is a fully runner. Um, it has all electronics and everything and it's a fully functioning car that I drive in the garden now and again. Very different with its bars. The only thing I don't like about this one, fitting the battery can be a bit of a pain because of these bars because you need these Velcro straps so doing them up is a bit of a faff. From that point of view I'll probably upgrade it to LiPo at some point because it'll be lighter because this thing weighs so much with all the metal that's got on the bottom. It's a very heavy old beast, but built like an absolute tank. Uh, if, you're, if you've got a keen eye, you'll notice that it's actually got a Avanti driver in it at the moment. I had it left over from when I sold an Egress, so I just put it in there for now. And to be fair, it is better than the Kurosho driver who's rubbish. <laughs> this is my Optima Mid Custom. It's the long wheelbase. Needs a full restoration kind of basically came like this. I haven't done much to it. The only thing that I've upgraded is I've put new tires and rims on it, but I have a whole new body to go on. It just needs to be taken to pieces, rebuilt, put back together again, and then a new body and it will be as good as new. Everything else seems to be working okay, so no real problems with it. It just needs a bit of love. So this is my Kurosho Turbo Optimum Mid. It's had a little bit of light restoration. It's a fully driving and functioning car. I've put a new bumper on the front. I'm here, I managed to get one of those. It's had new tires and new rims fitted. I have a new body waiting to go on it. Apart from that, it just needs to strip down and rebuild. The shocks are actually really good on this. So uh, this car hasn't done that many miles at all. I've also changed the arms and I've changed the chassis Already, as you can see, it has a new chassis on the bottom and all the arms are immaculate. It's got its anti-roll bar, rear anti-roll bar, which are super difficult to find. It just needs a good clean rebuild and a new body, which I have, and new decals, which I have as well. So it's just another project that's going to come to the channel. So this car that's very sorry for itself and doesn't look like much at all is something very special and I got it at a reasonable price. I think I paid £100 for it in this condition and if you saw it in a junk sale you probably wouldn't look at it twice. This is a Turbo Optima Mid SE. Uh, I have a body for it as well, but basically it just needs a full strip down rebuild electronics. I've got vintage electronics for it and the Kurosho, um a mechanical speed controller as well that I can fit back on it even though it looks like a bit of a mess with a bit of a rebuild fitting the extra parts on a decent motor but mainly it's all here it hasn't done tons of work it's just been sat neglected for ages so I've only thing I've done so far is I've managed to clean up the wheels they should be silver but the silver had completely gone the silver reacts and goes funny over age so I've basically gotten to this stage so that I can actually blow them over with the silver to make them look new again and just a full rebuild. It hasn't been messed with since it was been built all the screws are original so that's really nice so even sometimes when you look at these and you think Ew. Yeah, you can get some gems, that's for sure. And the last Kosho Mid I have is this, the original first version, Kosho Optima Mid. Now this one has been messed around with a little bit. It's got aftermarket rims. The body is not obviously original or correct. It's an aftermarket one, even though it is the right color. I have got a replacement. I won't even just take these off and put decals on. I'll actually do a whole new body as I think I can cut it out to a slightly better standard. And then it just needs a rebuild. Whether I'll keep these gold wheels or not, I honestly don't know. I'd like to try and get some uh, some proper ones. And I'm pretty sure I've got some in the collection. So uh, I should probably have to fit the correct wheels back on this. So that will be coming. And as you can see, I have a lot of Optima Mid work ahead of me. 
And last but not least in Kyosho is this, the F189 Ferrari Formula One car. Now I was lucky enough to get this as a kit and I built it on the show. There's a video so you can go check out if you want to watch me build this and paint it all up. It has all the original electronics and the correct motor and everything and has never been driven. I would like to drive it at some point if I can find somewhere indoors to drive this one just so I can experience it but obviously being so low and having a plastic chassis it wouldn't take much to scratch it and being that it's in perfect condition even though it's fully functioning it's got all the correct vintage electronics in it and everything and it's absolutely beautiful anyway I think we're going to end it there I've covered everything in the collection apart from Tamiya's so what I'm going to do in tomorrow's video we're going to cover all the Tamiya cars so stay tuned for part two